Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and providing these awesome uh, motor hubs that we're going to use to attach our wheels to our motors for this particular video. These are laser scented nylon hubs, so they should last a lot longer than the ABS ones that I normally use. So this is gonna be really, really good, and I can't wait uh, to get these things going. Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic. So we're back doing more traction testing, and today we're going to be using a different test setup, but uh, similar wheels to last time. So I've got three here which we tested last time which are a three o-ring wheel, the Pololu wheel and then my own silicon ones. These ones are the ones that were molded with the silicon off and then kind of glued back together. But on top of these three I've decided to add three extra contenders into the ring today. First of all is the silicon molded in place uh, which I think is there because this silicon didn't perform as well as the Paulu wheels last time and I think this is because the stretch of this silicon around the outside has meant that it's actually off center a little bit and that's what was causing the bouncing that we were seeing is that it hits lumps and bumps in the stretch of the cast and forces it off axis which does of course drop the torque output so we've got one that is molded in place which should hopefully be more rounded uh, and fingers crossed fixes this particular issue. On top of that, I have one that is actual two-part silicon. This is done with some like smooth on silicon rubber stuff uh, and it's supposedly a lot lower down the shore hardness rating than anything else I've got in my hand. So theoretically that should be the best performer, but as we've seen before, not always the case. And then finally, uh, because I did a screw wheel recently and I found that whole experience interesting, we're doing another one. This one using uh, very small self-tapping screws to kind of fill out the same rough radius as the rest of them. I don't fully expect this to do very well, but uh, hopefully it does better than the, the setup where they're all pointed down at the ground. Here is our new test environment and to show you how this works I'll just load a wheel into this real quick just like that. So we have the wheel sitting here and rigidly attached to the actual force sensor, the load cell over this side. There is no string anymore so the wheel cannot wobble around. All of the force is going to be put into A, flexing this base plate a little bit, uh, but then B, straight into this load cell. On top of that, we have extra weight at the back here to put lots of weight over this wheel. There is 150 grams off the end here uh, to give a decent amount of downforce on this wheel. So hopefully that kind of keeps everything uh, nice and contained. And then because of uh, yeah not having a rope or anything, all of that force should be transmitted straight through the load cell, which is really, really good. The final thing is that the load cell, the whole load cell setup can move around so that if there is bounce on these wheels, that can be displayed, uh, which is, because that is an important facet here. If these things are gonna bounce on a combat robot, they need to be able to bounce here. <laughs> Before we talk results, there was a minor change to the setup. I had to uh, go ahead and put a lithium battery on the drive system because otherwise it did this. Which is basically nothing and even though I did get data out of that, it wasn't seemingly that useful. I tried a couple of different wheels and yeah, because I wasn't actually getting the slip, it wasn't seeming to do a whole lot. 
Uh, so I upgraded to the 2S battery to give the motors more power and allow them to actually work because basically what was happening with that was we were hitting the stall torque on the motor at that voltage which meant that all of the wheels were going to give the same output essentially because there wasn't any extra power to give. So that's where we sat. Uh, so we changed the 2S battery and tested everything. At the end of the day, Pololu wheels ended up with 147.6 grams. The uh, Two-part silicons ended up with 138.1 grams. Bunnings silicone, uh, silicon, the bathroom silicon that was a two-parter that I glued together, that ended up at 137.7. So these two are very, very close in terms of the actual two-part silicon and the hardware store tube of silicon that I've used before. The mold in place, interestingly, came down a whole bunch off of those, 117.34. So I don't know what the difference is because this silicon is made the same as this silicon, and yet apparently uh, this silicon is worse at grip than this by like 20 grams, which is kind of weird. I don't fully know what's going on here. And then rounding out the I don't know what's going on here, we have the three O-rings where the three O-rings dropped quite considerably as well. These are at 35 grams. A far cry from any of the silicons or the Pololu wheels uh, that we've been talking about, which is really interesting. I thought from the last set of testing that these were a lot closer to the silicons than that. Apparently that old testing method really was not that great. Uh, and then finally we have the screw wheel down here which uh, as many of you probably predicted did terribly. We're talking uh, 4 grams as its best effort which is mm, not great when we're talking hundreds of grams of everything else. Obviously these realistically are values that you should take more as uh, indicative of each other and not actual testing forces because this whole setup is a very solitary, singular thing. Uh, so realistically, all you need to know, Pololu wheels still the best for traction and actually lightest weight. Now, some of you out there did mention that maybe the Pololu wheels are this good because they have a thinner area, so therefore the amount of pressure on them is significantly higher than the rest of the wheel setups. So I did go ahead and pull out one of my old, very thin silicon wheels and test this as well. This is about as thin as a Pololu wheel. And I did get a slight increase on traction going for this thin wheel. It was 138.6, so about a gram higher than all of the other silicons. However, that I think is still within a margin of error. So I don't think it's the actual um, width of the thing that is indicating uh, how much force is going on here. I'll also point out too that a couple of people said that uh, the Pololus are probably shrouded in rubber and rubber is grippier than silicons in a lot of instances. However, looking through the Pololu website, the closest thing I could find was that it is a silicon rubber. So it is actually still a silicon material. It's just different to all of the other silicon materials I have apparently, and somehow more grippy, even grippier than the 16A uh, sure hardness silicone that I've got, which is the kind of two part mold which is very, very interesting. I would have thought this would have been the most grippy thing out there, but it is comparable to the bathroom silicon, which is a lot easier to use and work with than this stuff is. Anyway, that is gonna be it for today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed that one, and I will see you in the next video.